Hi, Jason. Hi, how are you? I am so excited to be talking to a stunt coordinator tonight. Great, thanks. For me, watching Yellowstone and getting to talk to you about what you do, because this is old school stunts. Yes. It's old school stunts, it's horse work, and I, what you do with this show... From a horse perspective, I mean, there's nothing I like better than the opening scenes of an episode. And, you know, we're in the arena and they're cutting. Right. I mean, that is just, and some of the camera shots that they get are just phenomenal. Oh, yeah. But I love what you do because you bring in the best of the best. You bring in guys that understand how to ride, how to ride, rope, how to rodeo, but also how to work. A ranch. Sure, yeah. That's the, really the nice thing about this is, um, you know, I get to I get to get guys from outside of the of the usual stunt community. Yeah. You know, I get to go outside of it and find you know working day cowboys that uh, can come and so they get to experience a little bit of Hollywood and they get to bring their skills to it and it makes it so it makes it really authentic uh, in Yellowstone. You know, to make Yellowstone you know what it is. You know, and then you get to add in, like with season three, you got to add in the great biker brawl out in the field. So you're bringing in, you know, some vehicle stuff and man-on-man -man combat. I think one of your best pieces of work that this past season, though, was in Meaner Than Evil when Colby and Teeter were in the pond. Yeah. That was some of the best coordination and choreography I have seen. That was phenomenally done, Jason. Well, thank you. That was a real team effort with the director of photography of the episode and the director, uh, and, you know, Taylor wrote it so specifically, and it was a real team effort with how we were going to accomplish it, and I was really proud of the way that it that it turned out uh, with when we married all those pieces together. It was, it, it turned out, uh, I couldn't have been happier. It, it turned, it was scary. It was, it was exactly what we wanted it to be, you know, brutal and scary. And, uh, yeah, and it, it was just, it was just great. Yeah. I mean that, that worked so well. And the fact that the camera even came in with close ups, and so often, as you know, with a fight sequence like that involving horses, involving people, <laughs> involving water, camera's right. going to have a tendency to pull back. And give you yeah. a little wider shot. And that's not... And that's something I consistently see within Yellowstone. You put together and choreograph these great executions. Be it with horses. Be it with people. And the camera comes in. Taylor lets that camera come in close. So that we see this is the real deal. This isn't CGI. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, Taylor, Taylor likes to keep it uh, very strong, very real. To, we talk about all the time. We like to put uh, the actors in in the moment, in the in the action, and we like to let the audiences know that the actors are in the action. Mm -hmm. you know? So we really try to choreograph whatever we do to where the actors can do it, and if they can't, we can make it look like a, a situation where they they are doing it, and we put them in there somehow to where our cuts work. That, that it really feels like you're in it with them. Yeah, and some of the stuff is seamless. Like, I know that Jimmy, you know, uh, the Jefferson White does not rodeo. <laughs> he does not right. bronc bust. But uh -huh. I, got, I got to tell you that the cuts in there um, between some interstitial close-ups of him, of his face, but then the movement on the horse, it is so seamlessly done, it does look as if Jefferson is doing it. consideration this year did you as stunt co coordinator submit one episode or are the stunts being looked at on the whole i submitted uh i think the, the stunts are being looked at as a whole i submitted a few things that i really liked and, and we're really proud of one of them being in the, the river sequence uh the other one i think another one being a biker fight and some other things but uh i i wanted it to look i, I wanted them to look at the, the body of work as, as a whole that we did that season because we did some really we did some really great things that I was proud of uh, season three. Absolutely.
I'm so, uh, you you upped your game this season with season three. You really did. Thank um, you very much. You know, it's like one of the great ones, and I call it the fuck it episode with the the wild horses taking them all out the field up a hill. Yeah, and, that was that was that was really fun to shoot, it, and it was beautiful. When every time we went up there, uh, it was really beautiful, and I actually got to shoot a day a second unit on it too, and oh. uh, direct. So it was it was uh, it was really a it was really a neat moment and and really cool to see that many horses running across that field and down those hills and everything with the real actors behind them, and it was it was it was a great experience that was. I mean that I can honestly tell you because I've watched the entire series more than ten times. I start uh -huh. binge watching it and I just keep going season one, season two, season three, uh -huh. but I have rewatched that horse sequence so many times I can't even count just because of the beauty of it and the fact that we've actually got the actors in there and they're all at ease with the work with the movement and it's a testament to you that you have them with that kind of ease so they can do that yeah and we really have, uh, those guys work really hard at it and Taylor always has a cowboy camp you know before we start shooting that we all come out and you know, we get the actors re-familiarized with the horses and we get them uh, back, you know, doing, remembering their cowboy skills and stuff and tune them up before we start. Uh, so when we start the, the season, they're ready to go. And, uh, and all of them, all of them really work hard at learning the things. Uh, uh, you know, Jefferson White never even swung a leg over a horse until, you know, season one. Mm -hmm. And so he picked it up. You know, he amazes me how quick he picked everything up. And but Cole and Luke and uh, and the others, Jen Landon, uh, and Kevin, of course, uh, they're all so good at uh, at working hard at looking good on the horses, and they they really want to get out there and practice, and and it really comes across that I can put them in more spots. You know, I can. Mm -hmm. You know, and Taylor tells them all the time. The, the more you work at it, the better you get. The more uh, stuff I can write for you. So it's kind of like the carrots, you know, carrot out there, for, <laughs> uh, you know, to really get better. Well, and and I've said this many, many times. I've posted on social media. A man sitting on a horse that was made for Kevin Costner. Nobody sits a horse as effortlessly and as beautifully as he does. Yeah. No, Kevin. De Kevin Lee de definitely has a cowboy presence. You know. Yeah. Well, how do you even start when you get a script from Taylor? Where do you begin? I know where a stunt coordinator would begin, but for those that don't know, and with this particular series, where do you begin when you get that script in hand? How do you start breaking it down? Because we've got, in virtually, I'd say 90% of every episode, we're going to have, especially in season three, we're going to have Beth and Jamie at each other's throats. We're going to have people throwing punches through windows, bodies through windows. We're going to have, you know, car issues, biker issues, horses. 90% of the, this film is going to require something of you. Sure. Uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, a lot of times when I pick up a script, when I first read it, one of Taylor's is, the first thing I'm thinking is, how the hell am I going to do this? You know? <laughs> talking about like the the buffalo chase at night and stuff uh you know that was that was exciting and that that took a lot of planning and and figuring out uh and you know that and that's and where i start is is i look at it i kind of break down the the scene and in my head i try to figure out where the cuts are or the, how we're going to shoot it and then I start putting the pieces together. Okay, what, what person do I need to do this? What, what talent do I need to do this? You know, I start uh, just putting all the pieces. It's like a big puzzle that you just have to put together, you know. And, uh, and, and it starts with really just trying to figure out and having meetings with the directors and Taylor and talks about, about really what the essence is that they want to accomplish and what they want to see. And then I kind of just go from there and start building around that idea. And uh, and we just kind of work together to get to get the best thing put on film. How much lead time do you give yourself for breaking down a lot of these these things? Now, obviously, if the guys are just going to be on horses and they're running back and forth within the ring, 
uh, in the corral, that's that's one thing. That's a piece of cake for you. But then when you get the trickier stuff, like the pond scene with Jen Landon and Denim Richards and, you know, horses trampling them, that's going to take a lot more logistical planning for, uh, just from a safety standpoint. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, you just kind of, you just kind of, uh, because television moves so fast, you just kind of have to key in on those. And that's exactly kind of like what you just explained. When you, when you read something, you go, okay, that's something, but it's not it's not something we haven't done. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. You just have to kind of prioritize the things. And there's always, you know, a scene in, in, in almost every episode that, that you go, okay, I want to really concentrate on this one because this is going to be something that shocks people. Mm -hmm. This is going to be something that's important. And so I really want to focus in on this. And, and you start just working on how you can make that specific scene really jump off to the screen, you know, really, really take on a life of its own. And uh, so scenes like that are important like that, you know, we might get, you know, a couple weeks to kind of figure it out a week, week and a half. And uh, which on television shows is a long time. Mm -hmm. you know? But I, I have to kind of, uh, like I said, the speed of television kind of, you have to work fast. So you have to think about, you have to kind of get these things together pretty quickly and, and concentrate on them and, and really move forward with them. Now, you know, this season, you know, last season, on season two, we had Tate's kidnapping by the Beck brothers. That was very dramatic, man-on-man, -man, SWAT team uh, kind of stunt action. This year, we wind up season three with that multi-pronged ending, In the World is Purple. It looks to me, we've got, we had a lot more pyrotechnic activity this year. Yeah. <laughs> How do, how do you coordinate with your pyrotechnic people? Because you've got that explosive scene happening in Beth's office. Um, yes. And then we it, then concurrently, and obviously this is done through editing, making it all concurrent, you then have, you know, gunfire and desks flipping in, in, in uh, Casey's office. And then you got poor John being good Samaritan gets shot up out on the highway. <laughs> yeah, well, we, I mean... Uh... You know, we have a great effects team with Gary Elmendorf uh, and his, his folks, and they do such a great job, and I really trust them with, you know, and, and all the things, all the situations. So I really just have to choreograph the, the action around it to make it, make it feel real, and their effects are always amazing, and, and, uh, and they do a great job. So I just kind of concentrate on the actors, the actor's performance and uh, kind of let effects blow things up as they want to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love the stuff blowing up, but with this show, it's the detail that you bring, that human element, man on man, man on horse, that really is, is the salt of the earth with this show. And you do such a wonderful job, Jason. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And, you know, I, got, I can't credit, I can't, uh, you know, credit, credit Taylor Sheridan enough. Just his, his, uh, his writing and, and the worlds he puts these people in and uh, kind of make my job easy. He's, he's uh, you know, I'm just, it's, it's a really special project and I love being a part of it. Well, I've got to ask you, you know, you mentioned Taylor. That begs the question. Does he cooperate with your choreography and your stunt work when he shows up? being Travis. Uh, well, when he's Travis, that's kind of that's kind of his world, you know. Tra yeah. Taylor's a very good uh cut, he he's he's a very good cutting horse uh horseman. He he's and he rides reining horses very well, shows all the time. So when those guys shut up, when those guys shut show up, it's kind of like a day off for me. <laughs> you know, I I just kind of let Taylor do his thing and and I'm just there to help if he needs it and uh you know, help spot cameras and stuff like that or you know uh move cameras into different angles and stuff like that but really that's that those are those shows are those are that's taylor's world and he's very comfortable in it and uh he get, he brings the best of the best in the raining and cutting uh to come help us and i just kind of like i said those are kind of my days off i get <laughs> i get to kind of check out on those days I'm really curious, Jason, because at this point, for your core, for your principal players, you've pretty much got your stunt doubles 
uh, in line for, uh, you know, for who can play who and do what, be it an action sequence, be it writing, if it's a complex uh, thing. I suspect that Cole th does probably 90% of his own stuff, if not more. Yeah. Uh, as Kevin probably does as well, if it's not a... F <laughs> uh, most all the actors do, you know. We, I never really have to double them unless it's, you know, specifically danger, like scripted danger, like when Jimmy falls off horses and stuff like that, or or a lot or the, a lot of the roping sequences and stuff, we'll have to double them. But, but uh, as far as riding and, you know, charging, you know, it was all them in that big you know, horse gather and mm -hmm. stuff like that, all them. And they've, they've, over the years, they've become, they've become really uh, good riders and uh, kind of uh, know a thing or two about being a cowboy. And you have those core principal players, so they're doing their thing. When you need a double, you've got a double. But then you bring in new, new players each year, like this year, you know, uh, Josh Holloway shows up as Rourke. How difficult is it for you to find a complimentary double to come in who can handle the reins, so to speak, of this show? Sure. Uh, yeah, that, and, that, and that's, that's the thing about this show that, that is nice for me on, on some levels is I don't, I, I, I at times have to go outside the, you know, normal sun community. And it's not, it's not, it just takes a little searching, but you can always find a doppelganger somewhere out there mm -hmm. that, uh, I can do the skill, you know, you, it just takes a lot, you have to turn over a lot of rocks sometimes, but, uh, but it, it's, it's challenging at times, but Taylor hires a lot of guys too, that, you know, can do their own stuff. You know, when he brought in Wade and, uh, oh, the bad guys this year, Wade and I can't remember the other. Yeah. But, oh, Wade is phenomenal. Yeah. And they're, they're able, they were able to do most of their own stuff. You know, they, you know, a lot of the boots, he started out doing stunts way, way back, you know, mm -hmm. so. Uh, it was it, it, Taylor tries to make it a little easier that way um, when he casts those you know parts that are going to be in there for a year and stuff like that. New people. What is it for the Emmy voters out there for nominations consideration? What is it in your eyes that sets Yellowstone and the stunts above and apart from the other shows that are out there? I think it's honestly trying to choreograph stunts around when you're dealing with animals it's not it's not a motorcycle where you know if you put it in gear and turn the throttle it's going to go from a to b at a certain speed you know you it's it's really choreographing a melting of animal brains with with human brains to make something work you know and i i think that that uh, sets it apart also you know our like you said our we're we're kind of throwback uh stunts you know mm -hmm. we we're, we're down and dirty we don't do a lot of wire work we don't do a lot of uh uh you know fancy stuff our 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 stunts are nuts and bolts we just we just come at you and we just do it you know well and you do it so beautifully jason just so beautifully now did you do season four that we have yet to see i did i did <laughs> and i know you can't tell me when it's airing either <laughs> I can't tell you, but I will tell you that I had a lot of fun season four. Well, the way season three ended, I would hope that we're going to have a lot of fun season four because there's got to be revenge happening here. And revenge yeah. is always good for man-on-man -man stunt combat. Uh-huh. And I, I think the audience is going to thoroughly enjoy what Taylor has in store for him. And I, my plate was full this, this last season. Wow. Oh, J Jason, I can't thank you enough. It is so rare I get to actually interview a stunt guy. So to get to talk to you today was an, is an absolute pleasure. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the time. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Jason. I hope we get to do it again. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks.